All right, let's go. All right, all right, all right, Tim. What do, what do you want to start with today? Well, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. I guess uh, the World Juniors, the Canada plays the. Uh, you know, you know, Tim. I'd like to say I would think they should just have one coach, one coach for five years. Right. And uh, because if you keep getting new coaches in, I'm not knocking this guy. He's doing the best he can, but he was an assistant coach last year. And now he's a head coach. Right. And, and at Sutter, I remember Sutter, they wanted both with Sutter. Yeah. And uh, and he worked with, you know, he owned and works with the Red Deer Rebels, so he knows with kids. Like, I, I think you're right because I think what they just do, Team Canada, is they get the just the best scorers, right, on the yeah. forwards. And you know, if let's say, like, if you had Sutter, he'd say, "Well, I need a guy that can kill a penalty. I need a guy that could a good face-off guy. guy, and he might not be a big goal scorer. Yeah, but he might fit the perfect role." Well, I I still say they should have one coach. Coach for five years. Five years seems to be the minimum that you can coach in in, in the National Hockey League too, because after five years, they've heard all your yeah. talk and and everything like that. Yeah, well this is kind of a this was kind of a funny team because there's only one guy back from last yeah. year and these were the kids that really haven't played for Canada because of the pandemics. N- yeah. Normally they play, you know, under 15 and then they go to the Ivan Holinka tournament and then they go to the uh, and they anyhow how, how many times though do you see a team especially Canada hammer a team 10 nothing and then the next game gets shut out. <laughs> It happens every time. I don't know why. I, I, don't don't ask me why. That's it happens every time. Yeah. Well. Well, we wish them good luck to play in Germany today, and then uh, Germany always plays good against us. They yeah they uh, they got beat and they got beat yesterday by Latvia, which the team that Canada beat ten nothing. So the Germans will be ready. And well, they'll be ready. So, Dad, the Leafs are kind of in a bit of a free fall. Everybody's panicking now. Yeah, and, and you know, it reminds me of the Schmatzy told a story. Billy Ray was coaching uh, Chicago, and he said, and they lost the game, and he said, this is it. We're going to go, there's going to be changes made in this club. This, this is it. This is it. We're going to make big changes. And they sat down, Schmatzy and the other guy, they sent them down to the, to the American Hockey League, and Hey, they never, they never even got on the ice. No, that's right. Well, that was like the Leafs last night. They wanted to send a manager and they bench Kemp or Kemp. And, uh, you know, like, why would you bet? Like, like that's no, supposed- if you bench uh, Matthews, that's yeah. a little different story. Or Marner or something. Yeah. That's a little different story. Is there some guys you can bench and some guys you can't? Well, those guys, if you bench those guys, they got, what are they got, eight-year contracts? <laughs> yeah, they got like eight or nine. <laughs> say, you won't be around, and you go ahead, bench me if you want. They might sulk. You know, like, I, re- I remember one time, I'll tell a story, I'll tell a story that I benched, and I didn't even know I benched him. It was Wayne Cashman. There was one thing I would never do is bench uh, Wayne Cashman because because he's from Kingston, and, and guys that come from Kingston are pretty wacko. Right. They're all a little nuts. <laughs> They're all a little nuts. I could name a bunch of them. But anyhow, I don't. I, I shouldn't say this. He threw the sticks down. And I said, what the hell is he throwing the sticks around for? He got me afterwards in the car, and we were going down. And we were going down a number. I forget what it was. What was, what was the highway? That Route one? Day? I forget. We were going home anyhow. And there's, there's Rose in the car, and his wife was Lynn, in the car. yeah. His wife was in the car. And we're going down a two-lane highway, and he's going on, and he pull over. Uh, anyhow, I didn't even know I benched him. You know, it must have been in the middle of a lot of penalties or something like that or something. Yeah. So what's worse? Would, is it worse not to dress a guy or I, to dress a guy and put him on the bench? I remember one time I come in and my sweater wasn't there. Uh, I, think it was a, I think it was with Rochester, too. Anyhow, I, I, never, I never forgot that. My sweater wasn't there. I, I don't mind uh, being benched when I'm in the game, but but not to have my sweater. No. <laughs> that that was a killer. So, Dad, we're going to take a question by Alex E. from Twitter. Merry Christmas, Don. A few podcasts ago, Sydney talked about her son banging the sticks on the ice with, with 
when a penalty was about to be expired, Dell was a goalie. How come goalies in the NHL don't do that anymore? You know, that's a funny one. And I see breakaways and guys picking the puck up at the blue line and uh, walking in cold turkey. I don't know why they don't do that. I, it's a funny thing. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, they don't. It's just it's just a lot of those little things that are getting out of hockey, right? Yeah. You know? And, and that, when you bang your stick like that, everybody knows when you hear the stick banging, when you hear the guy banging the stick, to be a little careful yeah. because there's not that much time left. Well, maybe I, they I have so ma- maybe they have so many assistant coaches on there. One of their jobs is to yell <laughs> penalties up. Tripping over one yeah, yeah. down there. So we got another one, Dad. Blue and white fan from Twitter. Merry Christmas, Don. The Leafs are still struggling with Samsonov, is pl- and Samsonov is playing horrible. They played Columbus on Friday and then Carolina on Saturday. Why didn't Keith play Jones both games? Is there a rule that goalies can't play two games back to back? No, there's no rule, and they could play 20 games in a row. I was looking at the record the other day, and what was it? Eddie Johnson. And, boy, what a great picture they got of him on the cover. A of vintage that. Tendi, yeah, magazine. Oh, yeah. boy. And he's getting ready. He's guy coming down, you could just see him. And he really looked good. And, and – uh, Eddie Johnson, no, no, you, you, you can play 78 games, you can play 60 games, you can play 70 games. So They're, the question is, Dad, like, it is seems to be goaltending with the Leafs, even though, as they say, yeah. they bench their, you know, guy on the fourth line to send a message. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, why? Who, who like, did they bench? Kemp. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 if you bench uh, Marner or you bench Matthews. Yeah, you might be out of a job, like we but, were saying, yeah. yeah. They're going to be around a lot longer than you. Yeah. I, I hate to say it. I don't know those guys, but I like, like if you bench Stamkos, you know Stamkos is going to come back. Oh, you know. Uh, he, and, or McKinnon or yeah. Crosby yeah. or any of those guys. Marner or Matthews, I wonder if they'd quit on you. I don't know. I I really don't know. I Because they've never ever had that have, happen to them before. No. And uh, I don't know, boy. Yeah. That would be a tough one. Yeah. But, like, my question is, like, why wouldn't Keith just say to Jones, you're playing every, you're pl- it's your net. Because you're playing he's next- not calling the shots. You don't think he is? No, I don't think he is because he, he would put Jones back in there. And uh, I know Jones let in a couple of goals. But he, he, he's the guy that they're going to win with. Yeah, I mean, he, like, the, the, the game in New York, three pucks went off defensemen, right? And so yeah. he couldn't really blame him. Samson played horrible in uh, in uh, Columbus, and then last night you couldn't blame you couldn't you could, you can't blame. I mean, if you you know you're letting in what two two goals or three goals with that Leaf team, they sh- you should be winning. Yeah. But why doesn't so you're just I just don't understand why Keith like they're going. I don't out. think he's pulling. I don't. I don't think he's playing. I don't think he's. I think somebody else is is calling the shots, and he yeah sits around and uh, they talk around before. And uh, I think somebody else is calling the shots. It's funny the Leafs seem to do that, though. Eh? Like they, they're going to make that Lilligren. They're going to make him a defenseman, whether it costs them the Stanley Cup I or not. I watched him the other night. I, I just, I don't get it. Then you know, and like it'll be interesting to see. They have back-to-back games in California, and then they have a day off. So I just hope he says to Jones, "You're in that. You're in that. Deal and with stay it. in there." And, and he'd probably like that. He probably would like that. Because how are you going to get on a roll? Like, how does a goalie get on a roll if he's playing every other That's game? That's right. You're right. they got to get on a roll. So speaking of goalies, Dad, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Vintage Tendy Magazine. It's a magazine for goalies by goalies, and they have a great deal of Boxing Day and New Year's special. Use the promo GRAPES24, and you'll get 10% off a one-year subscription. Again, the magazines of the highest quality. They are great pictures. And, you know... It really is. Like, you will not find a higher quality magazine out there. It has approximately 60 full color, high gloss pages of unbelievable pictures. Yeah, I, I know. Where did he get them, though? I don't know. Like, well, you know, doing the Rock'em Sock'em, like, that was my job for 30 years, was finding photos and, and pictures. And they have stuff I've never seen before. No, so, I've never seen and, them either. So, if you want to sign up, use the promo Grapes24, get a 10% off your uh, one year subscription. Visit Vintage Lives here to subscribe and use the promo Grapes24. And the offer goes through January 28th. And as they say, if you have a man cave, it's great because they're almost all collector items. Yeah. You know, if you have a buddy coming over and he grabs that magazine, he'll he'll look through it the whole yeah, time. Yeah, and he'll won't stop. Yeah. So speaking of goalies, we got another question from Facebook. This one's from Tim. Question for the show. 
How come goalies hardly ever get interviewed? I guess that's between periods. And yeah, also, I what's never the thought w- of that? Okay, because they're too busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, gee, what happened to that third goal or so whatever? Also, what is the weirdest goaltending pregame ritual? Thanks. P.S. I love the show. You know, I saw these questions before, and I'm thinking, geez, I'm trying to think of it. The best I ever saw, and the one that shocked me the most, was, uh, was uh, Gary Smith. He used to call him, they call him, uh, everybody else call him Suitcase Smith, but because he went around too many, you know. It's all the teams he was on. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, his name was Axe. They used to call him Axe. And what he did was uh, he saved a girl, a guy <laughs> chasing a girl with an axe, and he he stopped the guy and, and everything. I don't know. But they call him, that's what they call him was the axe. the axe. But he used to get, he used to take his equipment off, even when he didn't play. He used to take his equipment off, the whole equipment, for except his under, for a goalie. Wow. And, and I mean, that is really something. Uh, that's the strangest one I ever saw. There was Glenn Hall that when, when he, if he, if he was being sick to his stomach, you knew he was in for a great game. And he used to be sick to his stomach before every game. And he, I, I think he played 500, <laughs> yeah. 500 games in a row. And uh, yeah, that, so that goes to our, that question earlier. Yeah, can he? Is there a rule? It wasn't back then. He played five. That's a record that'll never ever uh, be broken. It'll never be broken ever, ever, ever. Yeah. And uh, didn't uh, the goalie for the Leafs, Mike Paul Matier, they used to call him popcorn. Well, he, I used to eat popcorn all the time. And you know, you know, there's a guy that that could have. I wish I had 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 him. In, uh, yeah, you should have traded for him in Colorado geez. because they were looking for, you know, I think they, they were, were looking to get rid of him. Yeah. And and he had to retire. And what happened was the coach that he had before used to give him Monday off, like, you know, rest his knee. Yeah. And the, and the coach come in and said, no, you have to practice. And he was listening to the bubble. There you go. How many years later? You should have said, get, we made a deal for Lanny and Paul Matier. Jeez, I, I, well, they wouldn't get rid of him. He wouldn't get rid of him. Uh, uh, I think at that time, you know, his knee was kind of going on him. They they might have got they might have because you were saying originally when you were going to trade Wolf Paymont, it was for Daryl Sittler, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, Sittler had in his contract he couldn't be traded. So then they sent. So uh, then, do you want? And then I remember. Do you, do you want uh, Lanny McDonald? Holy shit! Lanny McDonald was scoring forty goals. He, they were breaking up the team. So, Dad, this is from Gord from Facebook. It says, Don, what is your opinion of bringing kids over from Russia to play AAA major Bantam hockey? The Barry Association did it, and I think it's sickening. Well, I was the guy that, that did not want to bring the Russians over at any time. And uh, when I was with the Ru- Mississauga uh, team, and we brought, we got, we brought one over, he he, came over, he he had no skates. He had no. We had to buy him a suit. The whole deal, and they they he's asking why are they bring kids over? Right. When we were scouting with the uh, uh, OHL, the triple in um, the GTHL, there was a lot of Russian kids coming over, and it was a bit of a scam. Yeah. Because. What we heard was that these guys were bringing these kids over and they would go to this certain academy and would cost the Russian parents like 30 grand or $35,000 yeah. yeah, a I year. Remember that. And the kids weren't that good. And I think what happened was they were, the parents were told, oh, you know, they, you know, you come over and you'll yeah. dominate. And they come over and, you know, there really wasn't too many Russian players. Well, the, the, the reason I heard, dude, was they, they couldn't get ice time. Yeah, we, we talked to one of the parents and we asked, why did you come over? And they said they couldn't get any ice time. Yeah, I couldn't get ice time. <laughs> guys used to get paid, paid to bring these guys over. Right. Yeah, they would get a fee, like a finder's fee and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they'd get a finder's fee. <laughs> they never even saw these guys play. No. Anyhow, I don't believe in it, but yeah, what are you going to do? Cindy's not here, Dad. She's taking a day off. So, But we wanted to thank our sponsors, NorthstarBets.com. Spreads.ca is now NorthstarsBets.com. It's still Canadian-owned. It's still one of the best places in Canada to play. They have everything you're looking for, slots, live dealer tables, sports books with built-in sports betting insight. You're going to bet. Bet with them guys. Right, because they're Canadian. And listeners that already have an account on spreads don't have to do anything. Just sign into NorthstarBets.com. 
So as exciting news, Dad, NorthstarBets.com, they're giving away one of your jackets to help Don Cherry's Pet Rescue yep. Foundation. And it's about 3000 too. It's a great one. It's a winter holiday and uh, themed. It's worth about $3,000. All you have to do is head over to NorthstarBets.com Instagram. All you got to go over to your Twitter page or the Rock'em Sock'em Facebook page for details on how to enter. There's no purchase necessary. There's a skill testing required. You have to be 18 in Alberta, Manitoba, Quebec, 19 in the rest of Canada, and the residents on Ontario are excluded. If I was an ordinary guy, how do I get, how do I find out? So you go either go on our Twitter page and we have a thing that you, you it'll tell you how to go there or okay. Rock'em Sock'em Facebook page or the NorthStarBets.com Instagram page and it'll tell you how to get, okay. get, uh, get, in, get into the contest. And for everybody that enters, a $5 donation will be made to Don, NorthStarBets.com. Oh, great. To the Don Trey Pet Rescue Foundation, up to $2,000. They sound like pretty good guys. Yeah, I know. They're, uh, they, they really helped us out. And mm-hmm. as Cindy would say, the, all the pet rescue people need help these days. Yeah, yeah. I guess, uh, I guess they bought little pups and everything when they were small. Co- yeah, well, COVID dogs, right? And COVID cats, you know, yeah. people wanted them and now, now they don't want them. They're, now, now they're growing up, they don't need them. They don't need them. So, Dad, we got Richard from Facebook says, Don, I watched Keep Your Head Up Kid over the holidays and I can't believe you sold cars. How many cars did you sell on your best week? I used to be a used car salesman and it's a tough racket. I established myself as the world's worst car salesman. One guy came in and said, "You all you car salesmen are alike. <laughs> I grabbed the guy, nailed him against the wall. I knew I was not a good car salesman. I remember Mr. Wegman. M- Wegman. At w- of the Wegman grocery yeah, chain? Yeah. Wow. Well, people don't know in the States, Wegmans, in like upstate New York, is a huge yeah. grocery store. I remember they, there was a house deal and the guy that, that you know, that, that was in the cars would know that how that was. I, I especially put white, 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 and it, and it came to black back top. He had a convertible. Oh, I couldn't believe it when it came to the back top. And, you know, he was a pretty good guy. He just said, well, just put on a white one. But I, I, was, I established myself as the world's worst car salesman ever. Yeah, and you worked who for who? I worked for Valley Cadillac. They, uh, they had... Uh, you know, I was the captain the year before, and they thought I would be, you know, pretty good. I was pretty, could talk pretty good, and but I was, I was. Because I remember they put an ad in the newspaper that says now scoring goals for Valley Cadillac, and you, Mom loved it because you got a new Cadillac, right? I got a new Cadillac every year, but I hated every minute of it. And uh, I went to work on construction, and and I w- worked on a jackhammer, and I loved it. So anybody that hasn't seen. Your biography movie, Keep Your Head Up Kid, it's on Amazon right now. So if you want to go, just go to Amazon Prime and you can watch it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the guy that played you, Jared Kiso, he's doing pretty good with Leonard Kenny. You you tell us the story. I watched it. I watched two of those. You know what? They talk talk so fast that you have to listen to them. Right, right. And, And everybody used to say to me all the time, why do you speak so fast? Yeah. Well, they, I, I almost said Jared almost said, when he's doing the Leonard Kenny, he almost sounds like a guy from Kingston because Kingston kind of talks with that type of fast cadence. Yeah, yeah. and they talk. And uh, Cashman, we come from Kingston. He used to be speak so fast. Right. I mean, Jared sounds kind of like Wayne Cashman on Leonard Terry. That's he does. The, he does the way he talks and stuff like that. Yeah. But I watched that. Uh, I watched. Yeah, Jared's a, he's a big. He's a p- pretty powerful guy now. He does that and Shorzy and all that. So he's he uh, and he's a good guy. He was him and his, he was a good guy. Yeah, and him and his him and his mom, uh, mom and dad were great and the guys. dog. Yeah, I see. I see. Put a. a, a, a uh, uh, half Nelson on the dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that one. The thing with Gus. Yeah, Gus was a great dog. So, and Dad, do you know where they shoot Shorzy and Letter Kenny is in Sudbury. Yeah, yeah. it's so. And looks pretty got, nice up there. That's right. And now we got a question. I'm from Sudbury. Guy from Miles from says from Facebook. I'm from Sudbury. I noticed Don played for the Sudbury Wolves for 55 games in the early 60s when they were in the Eastern Professional League. How did he like his short time in Sudbury, and did they still have the Stuff Wolf come out? Um, they had the Mine wolf? Mill, I think, up there up at the time. Yeah, and did the Wolf come out after they scored? Yes, they, the Wolf come out, and he after we score, <laughs> it was sort of embarrassing. But we made the playoffs. I I remember playing against uh, 
and near the end of the game. I'm trying to think of it, but it was near the end of the game. And I broke my stick over this guy. And I, I had the t- I broke the stick over this guy who was in green, eh? I remember yeah. it was in green. I looked up and with Tom McCarthy. <laughs> and he just smiled. And I don't know whether he smiled because Richard was playing for their my brother Richard was playing for the team uh, on the other with Kingston. Yeah. I don't know whether he he was saying that oh, that Blackjack McCarthy, he was like uh, the Bob Probert of the of Yeah, the, he was, boy. And you had to bother him, though. And, or he well, breaking a stick would bug him. <laughs> yeah. And he, and I'm standing there with, with no stick. And uh, and there, and with, every time he'd go on, Daryl, Daryl Sly would look out and he'd be, Don, Don. And and he he point he said he was on the right wing, <laughs> and oh he was a cruel guy, you know this guy this guy was used to get fifty goals every year, and they brought him up to I think in Detroit they had him kill penalties, <laughs> and, <laughs> and he could boy would he put the puck in the net he, he in close and put it right in the top corner. But it was a guy you didn't fool with. He went over to Harry Sin and he says uh, what did what what did he do, and he said. Uh, he kicked me in the corner. He says he kicked you, and he hit the hit at Barkley Plager over the head. I don't know. I, and well, it, he had to put a plate in his head after that. Yeah, and they were leading two nothing, and they lost. They lost three two, I think. It. Oh, but he was a tough guy. Black Tom McCarthy. Dad, we want to wish everybody a happy New Year. And, 24? Uh, it'll be 24. I always say it'll be a good year because 24 is Terry O'Reilly's number. And and, and, he, and Terry O'Reilly led the league in, in fights, I think. In- I think he was. I don't know if he led the league in fights, but he had he, he had 90 points. And he had something like 15 or 16 fights and over close to 300 minutes of penalties. <laughs> and they used to say, and, and the reporters used to come in and say, how could you have, have your leading scorer be in 15 fights or whatever? And and I said you can't take the old you can't take the teeth out of the tiger. No, I watched an interview with him the other day. They said, "Well, Terry, he goes, I I just he goes, I just started on my one wing, and then he says that was just for the face off, and then I went all over the place." And he <laughs> says, "Donnie Marcotte was always the guy back for me, you know, then <laughs> yeah. no, then I wouldn't get in trouble." But uh, so we got one more question, Dad. This is from Denton in from Twitter. It says, "Don, did your dad play hockey?" No, he never played hockey. He played baseball. And baseball back in back in those days was something. He led led the league in in hits, uh, stolen bases, and he led the league in everything. And uh, but boy, he he was a good ball player. And and I look at him every night just before I go to bed. So what did he do? He was an electrician. I remember he worked at the elevator, and he used to unload the boats there. And he used to take care of all the, the, the everything. He did everything. And I remember I went over there one time, one time, and he was reading a book. I said, Dad, I don't, I don't understand this. I said, every time I, you know, you come over here, you're reading a book. He said, I get paid for what I know, not what I do.